welcome once again to our discussion on applied econometrics today we are going to discuss about simultaneous equation model right so what we are going to discuss is simultaneous equation model simultaneous equation model or in short I will be using this term SEM simultaneous equation model right now why this simultaneous equation model is important to uh, understand because if you if you look at in our previous section we were talking about instrumental variable estimation technique to solve the endogeneity problem and we said that there are three reasons because of which endogeneity may arise in a model what are those the first reason for endogeneity was omitted variable so that means if you if you if you again think back while discussing about instrumental variable estimation technique we said that uh, let us think about our wage function right log of wage which is basically a function of alpha plus beta 1 education plus beta 2 ability plus u now this ability we said that this variable is difficult to observe and difficult to measure as a result of which we generally do not include ability in the model and that ability goes into this error term. So, in our model we will have only this we will have only this. So, beta 1 education plus u and this u now captures this ability and if we assume that there is some kind of correlation between education and ability then this education variable gets correlated with the error term. So, that is the source of endogeneity we are talking about in our previous section. So, this is endogeneity due to omitted variable right. Now, the second reason for the second reason for endogeneity is basically the simultaneous equation uh, system or simultaneity simultaneous relationship ok. So, that is the reason we are going to talk about simultaneous equation model otherwise if the if the if the model demands ACM and we estimate a single equation method then that model will suffer from simultaneity bias which will lead to the endogeneity problem is this clear so this is basically the second reason of endogeneity okay simultaneity is called simultaneous relationship that means two way causal relationship is the second reason for endogeneity that is why we need to discuss in detail about this simultaneous equation model ok simultaneous equation model. Now by definition what is simultaneous equation model when is when two variables what is the definition so this is the definition. So the definition is when two variable are jointly jointly determined two variables are jointly determined okay then we say that that constitute a simultaneous equation model as an example we can say that demand demand and supply demand and supply of a commodity demand and supply of a commodity or of an input 
used for production. Constitute constitute ACM ACM demand and supply uh, example if you uh, can remember then it would be easy for us to understand simultaneous equation model. So, let us now talk about the demand and supply of an input which is used for production and we will take uh, let us say labor demand and labor supply. Okay, labor demand and labor supply to understand simultaneous equation model. So, this is HSI is basically the labor supply, the aggregate labor supply, let us say in ith state of a country. Let us say we are talking about in Indian context and this is the ith states labor supply, okay, which is a function of let us say alpha 1 w i 1 plus beta 1 let us say z i 1 plus u i. Okay? So, here h s i what is h s i? This is the aggregate labor supply. labor supply in hours actually in hours labor supply in ith state ith state then w1 i is is average uh, aggregate labor supply in ith state and this let us say in agriculture. So, we are talking about agricultural labor supply and agricultural labor demand, labor supplied and demanded specifically in the agricultural sector. So, this is average wage that prevails average wage that prevails in agricultural sector of ith state. What is Z1i? Z1i is average industrial wage industrial wage of ith state okay and ui is basically the error term all right now if we try to estimate can we estimate so this is the labor supply function this is the labor supply function labor supply function okay who are labor supplying the labor this is basically the farmers farmers who are actually supplying uh, sorry the laborers the wage laborers they are supplying uh, labors so this is the labor supply function so the question that we are asking can we estimate can we estimate Can we estimate this, this labor supply function using OLS? This is the question. Can we estimate this labor supply function using OLS? Now, this equation is a very peculiar uh, in, in nature and we need to, we need to clearly understand how and in which way this equation is different 
from the equations which we have discussed earlier. So, here what is happening? When we applied OLS, we assume the left hand side variable is purely endogenous, which is the labor supply, and right hand side all variables are exogenous in nature. Right? Now, this W1i, Wi1, which is the average wage, agricultural wage, we are assuming that is also an exogenous variable. What does it mean? It means that we have a capacity to fix agricultural wage at different level and then we can observe how the laborers are supplying the labor given that wage rate is fixed exogenously. So, that means we need to conduct some kind of some kind of experiment by fixing W i 1 and Z i 1 at different level. Industry wage, agricultural wage should be fixed at different level and then we have to observe how laborers are supplying their labor when the W i 1 and Z i 1 are fixed at different level. But in reality, that type of experiment is very hard to conduct. Rather, what we observe as W i 1 and Z i 1 as actually the observed wage rate. So, W i 1 is actually the observed wage rate, observed wage determined determined by by the demand and supply of labor. So, what we observe is actually the equilibrium wage rate okay which is determined by the intersection of demand and supply assuming that labor market always clears so that means there is no unemployment in the labor market that is the assumption okay so that means this equation in this equation wi1 is actually not an exogenous variable rather this wi1 and this hsi that means wage rate and labor supply they are jointly determined that is why they are forming actually a simultaneous equation model. So, causality runs from here to here and also from here to here. Okay. Average wage rate that prevails in the agricultural sector of the ith state that will determine the aggregate labor supply at the same time depending on what is the aggregate supply the wage rate will also be determined that means wi1 and hsi they are jointly determined in a simultaneous equation model by specifying only the supply function we cannot actually estimate this type of equation because of this simultaneity bias is this clear so that is the reason i said this equation is quite different from the earlier equations where we were using OLS. So, OLS is applicable only when causality is unidirectional, it runs from here to here, from independent variable to the dependent one. Here is a case where we are getting bidirectional causality, that means Wi1 causes HSI aggregate labor supply and aggregate labor supply also causes WI1. These two variables that is why we said jointly determined. Okay. That is why to estimate this equation what we need to do? We need to specify a labor demand function as well, labor demand function as well. Okay. So, that means labor demand function let us say that is h d i aggregate labor demand which is a function of alpha 2 
let's say w i 2 plus beta 2 z i 2 plus let's say this is u i 1 this is u i 2 what is w i 2 w i 2 is again the wage rate okay the wage rate that prevails in 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 the agricultural sector and z i 2 is basically what is z i 2 i would say z i 2 is basically the total available land in ith state why okay now what we'll assume that covariance between z i 1 and u i 1 is 0 that means z i 1 is strictly exogenous in the first equation covariance between z i 2 and u i 2 is also equals to 0. Okay. Here again what is happening? So, that means this labor demand which is also a function of agricultural wage and also labor demand is a function of the total availability of agricultural land. Obviously, if the available land is more then there would be more demand for labor, right? More demand for labor. Now, why we have included z i 1 in the first equation? z i 1, now if you talk about the signs of this, so that means alpha 1 is assumed to be alpha 1 is assumed to be positive. Why? Because as wage rate increases, obviously the laborers will supply more labor. That is why alpha 1 is assumed to be positive. Of course, there are cases where alpha 1 can be negative as well, but we are not discussing the unusual pattern of labor supply function 1. The standard standard labor supply function which comes from the optimization of the laborers that give alpha 1 to be positive. What is beta 1? Beta 1 is actually negative. Why? Why? Because as the average wage obviously as the average industrial wage goes up then laborers will move from agriculture to industry. Agriculture to industry and obviously that is the reason labor supply in the agricultural sector will come down. Okay. okay. Why this is so? Alternatively, you can think that z i 1 is basically the opportunity cost. Opportunity cost, it gives, it, it, it gives, uh, it, it measures opportunity cost of supplying labor in agricultural sector. What is my next best alternative? Next best alternative is industrial sector. So, when I am supplying labor in the agricultural sector as a laborer, that means I am sacrificing my opportunity to work in the industry. So, that means working in agriculture has a cost in terms of the wage that I sacrifice from the industrial sector. That is the reason this beta 1 is actually negative. If I have more industry wage, then I will supply less labor in agricultural sector. That is the reason we have included z i 1 in the labor supply function. Without that, the labor supply function would be misspecified. There are many other factors apart from these two and all those factors are captured by u i 1, 1. For simplicity, we have kept only two variables, agricultural wage and industry wage. While agricultural wage, 
that directly affects labor supply. Industry wage we included just to represent some kind of opportunity cost of labor supply in the agricultural sector. Is this clear? Similarly, in labor demand function, what is the sign of alpha 2? Alpha 2, since it is a labor demand, as wage rate increases, obviously the farmers will demand less labor, less labor. And what about beta 2? Since labor and land, they are complementary in nature, neither labor alone nor land alone cannot produce anything. That is why land and labor, they are complementary in nature. As a result of which, we assume that beta 2, that means, what would be the sign of beta 2? As land increases, then that will also become positive. There would be more demand of labor from the farmers, okay? more demand from the labor. Uh, 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 from the farmers. Now, if you represent, if we represent these two, let us say in the x axis, what we are measuring? x axis we are measuring h, which is actually equals to h s i equal to h d i. So, basically we are measuring labor demand or labor supply whatever and here we are measuring wage. So, this is our labor demand function which is a downward sloping curve. This is h d i and this is h s i and what we observe in the labor market is basically what we observe is this. Okay. So, this is aggregate labor supply and this is the equilibrium. So, this is the equilibrium labor demand and supply. Okay, and this is the equilibrium wage rate. Wage rate. Okay, equilibrium wage rate. Now, in our previous equation, we said that uh, uh, we said that labor supply which is this is a function of alpha 1 w i 1 plus beta 1 z i 1 plus u i 1 and then we said that h d i equals to alpha 2 w i 2 plus beta 2 z i 2 plus u i 1. Now, if we remove these two z i 1 and this term and this term from these two equations, then what will happen? If we remove these two terms z i 1 and z i 2, then what happens? Both labor supply and labor demand then is a function of w i. So, that means what we can say from this what comes out that labor supply and labor demand then both are function of only one variable which is w. So, in ith state aggregate labor supply and aggregate labor demand both are function of the average wage. If that is the case, if that is the case, 
we cannot actually distinguish, we cannot actually identify, we cannot identify the equations, whether we are estimating a demand function or a supply function. Please try to understand the importance of ZI here, the importance of the exogenous variable in the model. Okay? If we remove the exogenous variable, we keep only the wage rate in both the equations, then labor demand and labor supply will become, both will become a function of wage. If that is the case, there is no way. So, in this case, in this case, in this case, we cannot, we cannot distinguish between between H S I and H D I that means labor demand and labor supply. So, if we estimate what will happen? We will estimate the function, but we do not know whether we have estimated a demand function or a supply function. Okay? That is the reason, therefore, therefore, identification, identification comes prior to estimation. Identification comes prior to estimation. Okay? First, we have to identify and then we need to estimate. And if we need to identify, those exogenous variable will play important role. How? Let us now introduce the ZI terms in equation 1 and 2. So, this is beta 1, zi 1 and this is beta 2, zi 2. Okay? Let us now understand the identification problem conceptually, how these variables they help identify these equations. Let us assume that there is some kind of change in zi 2. That means, there is some kind of change in agriculture in total labor, okay? in total sorry, in total availability of land. So, in this equation, what happens in the labor uh, demand function, what we assume that wi1 is basically a variable. That means, if there is a change in wi1, there would be change in the labor demand along the curve. And we assume Z i 2 is an exogenous variable, that means we consider that as a parameter. So, while, while W i 1 and W i 2 are basically, Actually, this is W only because 2 means in W mentioned in equation 2. So, I can say that while W i W instead of W i 1 and W i 2, I will say while W i is, is basically a variable, W i and I would say h i which indicates labor demand and labor supply they are variables basically variables z 1 i z i 1 and z i 2 are considered to be parameters, parameters. If you go back to your principles of economics, we learned about 
shift along the curve and parametric shift. So, that means parameters are assumed to be constant in a two dimensional plane. So, we, this is a two dimensional plane in the y axis we are measuring w in the x axis we are measuring h. So, other things other factors which affect which affect this demand and supply this this w and h they are considered to be fixed that means they are parameters if there is any change in the parameter then the entire curve will shift either left side or right side that is called parametric shift okay parametric shift because Look at this HSI and HDI, they are function of WI only. We assume WI and then we will say Z. So, that means they are considered to be parameters. So, if ZI2 changes, then what will happen? That will affect that will that will affect the HDI because ZI2 is not appearing in the supply function. So, labor demand will shift if there is a change in zi2 that means total availability of land let us assume that zi2 let's assume zi2 increases so what will happen zi2 increases means HDI this labor demand that will shift rightward like this. Like this. If there is an increase, if there is a decrease, then that will shift leftward. Okay. And every time, every time this labor demand function changes either upward or downward it will intersect with the lever supply function because lever supply function is not changing. So, if we collect all these intersection points and connect that then we will identify the lever demand function sorry lever supply function. This is going to be our lever supply function. This is very conceptual please try to understand once again. What I am saying that let us assume that ZI2 is changing. First, we assumed it is increasing. If ZI2 is increasing, since ZI2 is assumed to be a parameter in this equation, the labor demand function will change, will shift upward. This is called a parametric shift. Total availability of land in IH sector is increasing. Obviously, labor demand in IH sector in aggregate will increase. So, this is a rightward shift I have indicated. Okay? This is rightward shift. Z HDI will shift upward and every time it shifts that will give a new intersection with the labor supply because labor supply is fixed at its original point because a ZI2 is not appearing in the supply function. So, if we collect all this equilibrium point and then connect them, that means we are able to trace out the labor supply function. This is how we can identify the labor supply function when Zi2 is changing. 